Welcome to the Traction Coffee Roastery and welcome back to Joy Bike. I'm Mike. And I'm Chase. And today is gonna to be a pretty fun video. We're gonna show you how to customize a bike for less than $100. And why you may be asking, well, this bike used to be mine and I handed it down to Chase recently. And we're looking to breathe some new life into it, but Chase is on a little bit of a budget. So we have a couple new parts, but we have a few other ways that we're getting creative to make this transformation happen. So to kick this thing off, we're gonna head over to Lowe's and get some supplies. So let's get to it. So I'm pretty excited about this because I've never really customized a bike in this way. I've built up a few bikes in my time, but I haven't like refreshed uh, a bike the way that we're about to do it. So I'm gonna lean pretty heavy on you and your expertise because I know you've done this a few times. Yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, I'm actually really excited too because I haven't really gotten this like nitty gritty with the bike in a while. So it's gonna be fun. But you saw there's white crank arms on Chase's bike already. And I was telling Chase like back in the day, Chase Hawk, who is one of the most legendary BMX riders out there, he had a bike that had white bars and white forks as well. And so I told Chase, I'm like, this bike would look so dang good if we did white bars and forks. So we're headed to pick that stuff up right now. Are you usually team blue or team orange? <sighs> Honestly, I used to be a team orange guy, but Lowe's is right down the street from our roastery. So Lowe's has become the preferred one because it is more convenient and I do love convenience. All right, first stop, aisle four. You got the aisles down too? Yeah, dude. Yeah. This is my list. <laughs> no slip grip. No slip grip. Ooh, you know what this might? Nice, that was good. This might be all we need. 8120. All in one paint and primer. Five times stronger adhesion. No peel guarantee. Okay, let's get two of those. Two of them? Two of them. Gloss white. And then we're gonna do some gloss clear. <laughs> oh, you got the We pretty much got everything on our list <laughs> now, but the last thing we need, and perhaps one of the more important things is paint stripper, so we can get the paint that's currently on the handlebars and forks off pretty easily. You don't want any basic stripper. What you really want is a premium stripper. Oh, fastest draw in the West. Oh, what's your speed? Look at that guy. <laughs> Look like a thief. You know what's kind of crazy? It's crazy. Is we didn't get ID for spray paint. Huh? And I've never had that not happen. And we just got like, this is way gnarlier than spray paint. So yeah, strippers, dude. Welcome back to the Joy Machine, where today it is February 5th, 2005. <laughs> so I come from the world of mountain bikes. In my eyes, when you customize a bike, like spray paint is the last thing that you're actually going to do to that thing. Oh, so for sure. Being in the world of BMX is pretty funny because it's a lot more... Yeah, I mean, it, the finishes don't have to be as, as like weather resistant because you're not out in the elements yeah. as much. It's about party time. We're rolling back into the shop now. However, it does look like there might be a storm moving in here. I was here. thinking of that when we walked out. I was like, oh, okay. So let's cross our fingers. Worst case scenario, we can bring it in. We have like a front room here in the shop that we can bring everything into and let it dry. So Open the garage doors up. Yeah, we'll be good. Mike's upgraded from jumping gates to locking gates <laughs> and having his own gate to, for people to jump. Don't jump this gate. That's not an invitation. Yeah, there's barbed wire, that hurt. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. We spent about $75 there on a couple of different items. So first things first, the one item that is probably not the most necessary, the paint stripper. We got that because that's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. We're not gonna have to spend a whole bunch of time like sanding all the parts down and just like going to town on that. We also picked up latex gloves. Now, if you're using paint stripper, I highly, highly, highly recommend it because that stuff's nasty. We also picked up two cans of white spray paint that doubles as a primer. We also picked up a wire brush, and then we picked up some sandpaper in varying grits. Grand total about 75 bucks, and if you don't pick up gloves and the stripper, you're gonna save you know, another $40 roughly on top of that. We also got a few other parts from the internet. Uh, we got some tires. We also picked up a chain 
to throw on this bike just for another little white accent totally um, and so. the chain that's on this bike has been the chain that's been on it since i built this bike back in early 2020. yeah it's in rough shape yeah it's pretty <laughs> crusty it's pretty rough shape. Okay, mike's got some ingenuity going on behind me i didn't want to be painting everything down on the ground risking like dirt blowing on top of it so it ends oh, up being yeah, kind of so. gritty so i'm using these light stands and we are going to basically like rig up a hanging station so we can hang the bars and forks. When, you, when you're painting everything on the ground like that, you kind of have to pause yeah, and like right. wait for one side to dry and then go yeah, to the yeah. next side. This way we'll be able to get the whole thing oh, done man. And do the quicker. fork and the bars at the same time. Exactly. Oh, this guy's thinking. That's why I have him here helping me with this because I wouldn't be thinking of that. So I, I outgrew my complete bike that I was riding for three or something years. I just started kind of out riding that thing and yeah. I needed something new. And What started first? You broke your fork, right? Like, didn't you I, bend your fork really bad? Yeah, like I broke the axle in my Whoa. front wheel. <laughs> Hello. And yeah, I, I started realizing like, oh, maybe like the way I'm riding BMX is a little bit too much for what's going on here. But that is something good to know. So if you're looking to get into BMX and you're curious about what kind of bike you should buy, always pick up a complete bike first yeah. because they're pretty inexpensive like the bike you had was maybe 350 400, bucks, 400 yeah. bucks yeah and so as you go along what you can do is you can start replacing parts as you're breaking them as opposed to spending two thousand dollars on a top end bike you can start really really entry level like i said earlier i'm from a mountain bike background i didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money because i was like is this even something I'm gonna be into two years from now? So I got something fairly cheap and I was able to, yeah, hang on to that thing for like three years. Totally. The dollars that you spend on that is, they go a long way. Yeah, so yeah, sure. start there if you're looking to start somewhere. But yeah, fun stories on this bike. First things first, it is a Corey Walsh Colt frame. So that's why I picked it up. Corey Walsh is one of my good buddies. And yeah, I was stoked when he got this signature frame. I knew I had to pick one up. And I was at the, you know, the end of my lifespan on my last frame. So it just made sense. Pick this thing up in 2020. And yeah, I traveled all over the country riding this bike. I was riding a bunch in California and Nashville and Wyoming, just kind of all over the place, big road trips, a whole lot of fun. So a lot of good memories on this bike. And I'm stoked to see that it's not just sitting in the garage, not getting any love, that it's still getting ridden and it's getting ridden really well. So well, and obviously I appreciate it. And it was pretty perfect timing because like you were building up your new bike. Yep. And I was just getting to the end of the lifespan of my old bike. So yeah, I'm pretty thankful that you were kind enough to give this thing up and, and give it another life with me. My man's organized, making lists. Look at that. He's got lists on the whiteboard over there. He's got lists in that brain. He's got lists in the phone. And now they're going on paper. So we need to figure out all the things that we have to get done on here. We're gonna start with strip paint. Wheels off. Why do you hold a pencil like that, man? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Immediately after sanding the bars and forks, we can probably start throwing some paint. While we're waiting for the bars and forks to dry, we're gonna break the chain that's currently on the bike and get rid of that thing because it is in really bad shape. We're gonna show you and you're gonna be like, chains can do that? It's it's and, crazy. And I've been riding it, dude. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> and I've been feeling it. So we're gonna break that chain and get the new chain on there. And once that chain is done, we're gonna check in on the paint and see if it's dry. If it is, then we're gonna spray some clear coat. Now, as we're waiting for the clear coat to dry, I have some new parts for my bike as well. So we're just really maximizing as much time as we can today. And I'm going to install a new seat post and cranks on my bike. All right, let's get some paint stripper. It's a little crazy being downwind from that. Yeah. Tell you what. Yeah, definitely don't spray this stuff inside because it's probably pretty nasty to breathe. But as you can see, if you get the camera a little closer, there's a chemical reaction going on right now. So we're gonna give this a 15 or 20 minutes and allow this to start stripping the paint. We have a timer going right now. There's a chemical reaction going on, removing the paint. And uh, we've got Zach McCracken in the house, the sheriff. <laughs> So we're gonna jump ahead a little bit and I'm just gonna break the chain now. 
You're... I'm just glad that the chain is being broken in here in a controlled environment and not when I'm about to drop into a bowl. Because that's been in the back of my mind for a little bit, looking <laughs> at the condition of this chain. There's like fragments of metal being broken off of it. This is how bad this chain is. <laughs> it's just stuck. And like it doesn't, I don't want to like cut myself, but it's so hard to move it. So like when you'd pedal it, it would just have these random like lumps and you could feel it when you were pedaling it. It's looked like this since I rode the bike. So props to you for continuing to ride it. But yeah, this thing is going into the trash. Give me a fresh tire. Why don't you? Ah! Let's lace them up. The bead just isn't quite in there properly. Is that oh weird? God. <whistles> Alarming me easy. Ah! Oh my God, dude. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to be able to stop it. Oh, well, no. that's not good. <laughs> Woo! At least there wasn't like a hundred PSI in there. Holy smokes, dude. That thing is toasted. I don't think I have a tube here. Maybe I have one in my backpack. Yeah. But our timer just went off. So we're going to go start stripping the rest of the paint off. Let the record show that my tube's not uh, inflating outside of the bead. So. <clears throat> I'll let you do the other one too. <laughs> All right. We've got our gloves on. We're going to see how much this lifted the paint. It's not super hot or sunny out today, so I'm thinking that it's probably not gonna be as much as we want. It's coming up, just not as much as we're hoping that it would. Let's see if we can get a little more with a wire brush. Oh yeah, there we go. See the paint coming off? Yeah. We've got a good majority of the paint off now thanks to the paint stripper which is going to make our lives a whole lot easier when it comes to just getting these things sanded up and ready for paint to go down so we just want it to be prepped well enough that when we start throwing some paint down on this it's not going to just bubble up or look terrible i gotta say so i haven't used paint stripper in a really long time especially the spray on kind and you used to be able to buy like aircraft paint stripper and that really doesn't exist anymore. I completely understand why it's a super nasty chemical substance, but when you use that stuff, it literally just pulls the paint off. Like it just flakes off. This on the other hand is not doing that. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. It just means we're gonna have to spend a little bit more time using the sandpaper. Okay, so I'm spraying the bars and forks down with some alcohol real quick, just to make sure that we don't have any contamination when we start throwing paint on, but they stripped down and sanded up really nice. Pretty happy with the end result here. Uh, we had to move under some covered area because it did start raining outside. So it's gonna be a little echoey in here, maybe. Um, it's a little darker in here as well, but we do have a light set up so we can make sure we're doing the best job possible getting these painted. We've got a little bit of runny paint on the forks, which is a bummer, but I think we can fix it. We're gonna let it dry and just hit it with a little bit of like wet sandpaper. And I think we'll be able to get that taken care of and looking really nice. No runs, no drips, no errors. Hmm. Little, little trick if you're ever running into this is to make sure that the bead is setting all the way around. So you can see how it's kind of coming up there. And this side actually looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I only have 20 PSI in here and I'm just gonna run it around like this and just see if we can get that bead to set a little better this time. We'll see what this does. That already looks good. Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty mean. <laughs> I like that. Never had a colored chain on my bike, I don't think. Well, so we'll see how this holds up. Yo. I mess with that. Look at that. Oh, that does look pretty rad. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. 
nice. You're about to be looking like 2008 Chase Hawk, man, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Does that mean I get a ride like him? Eventually, maybe. We'll see. Probably not. That's not going to happen. But I'll ride and I'll have fun. I'll ride like 2024 Chase Willie. How's that There sound? you go. And that's just as fun. I like that. That looks really good. That's the chain tension I like running too, so. <laughs> Loose chain gang. <laughs> this is the Wooder Tire Wedge. Wedgie is what they call it. And this guy's actually here in Colorado as well. He makes some really, really cool stuff. He's 3D printing it all at his house. And um, yeah, this one actually is pretty cool. He did it custom for us. It's got the Traction Coffee Roasters logo on there. That was a cool little surprise to get in the mail. So shout out to him. But as you can see, it's really nice because then you can get the wheel in straight. You can get the chain tensioned and you're not having to like fight it with wrenches and like scratching up your paint. I think we can cross some stuff off the list. Okay, we've got wheels off, tires on. Sandbars and forks, complete. New chain, complete. Paint bars and forks, in progress, and clear coat. So what I'm gonna do now is move on to my bike really quick. We're still gonna let that dry for a little bit longer. The crank arms and seat posts on this bike are brand new as of like four months ago when I built this bike but they didn't make these crank arms in chrome. And these crank arms are really incredible. They're demolition crank arms. I'm tried and true on those arms, but once they came out with a chrome pair, I figured I would upgrade to those just so they match the bike a little bit better. Same thing with the seat post. When I built this bike, nobody had a chrome post in stock. So we went with the black one, but look what I found. This is an official measurement, by the way, one fist of post. Another reason to love these crank arms is that they are a quarter inch drive to get them tight. So you can really get them tight. And also if you have a random wrench in your bag, well, you've always got the tool you need. You're not searching around for a six millimeter that you're probably gonna strip out. Now, if you're a bike mechanic and you do that for a living or you're really good at it, you probably don't wanna watch this part. <laughs> is it the right way? No. Does it get the job done? Yes. <laughs> get this sprocket off. We're moving pretty quick on this part of the build. Pretty stoked. I may have made a critical error though. I didn't take my pedal off Yeah. Well, before I, I took my bike. crank arm off. Here's another spot where you don't want to make an error. Since these are 48 spline, it's very easy to go on one spline off and then you're pedaling and it's all cattywampus and it does not feel good. <laughs> Technical term. <laughs> cattywampus. Can you define that for me? Not good. Not all good. bad. <laughs> he knows. Oh, wow. All right, check it out. I like that. This is one of the more complete builds that I've ever done, I think. I'm pretty stoked with it. There's always like something where I'm like, oh, I could do one more thing. This is good, we're stoked. We're back inspecting. Everything looks pretty good. We have a couple of areas with just some runs. So we're gonna wet sand them down and then we're gonna apply another coat. We're big fans of Supercross, Motocross. Right now it is Super Motocross. It's actually the last race of the season. So we're gonna let this set for a little bit. And in between races, I'm gonna jump back over here and check on it and just kind of see how it's looking. Might wet sand just a little bit more, apply another coat. And then before we leave tonight, we'll probably throw a clear coat on here and then let it cure overnight. And then come back tomorrow and start reinstalling everything on the bike. All right, we're back for day two. It basically rained all night, but we did get the clear coat on last night. We let it cure. Yeah, these set up really good. So we're gonna take them back into the roastery now. Um, just clean them up real quick and then get them back installed on the bike. We forgot about our list. So, you know, without saying we've got my bike done. That's pretty sweet. And then we've just got the clear coat on last night. So we're basically done. We've got the bike going back together right now and just got to get the front wheel back on. And then we're going to really see how this thing looks. I'm very curious how different this bike is going to feel. There's 
a few adjustments with the new tires and slightly longer rear end that might make it feel a little bit different underneath. I've never had a white handlebar before. Across all of my bikes, always been a black handlebar. So having that white under my hands might, might throw me off for a little bit. Might take a little bit of getting used to, but sure does look good. It looks so good. Those are two uh, good looking bikes. It definitely needs good. black ribs. Yeah, definitely. It definitely needs, needs black, black ribs. ribs, but that's something we can get fixed here pretty yeah. soon. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this build. It looks so good. I'm stoked on how it turned out. I'm excited to see what it looks like when you're actually riding it. We were hoping to wrap this video up with going out and getting a session, but it does not look like there's any end in sight for this rain, which is kind of a bummer, but that just means that there will be another video coming soon with us getting out and riding our updated refreshed bike. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you enjoyed this type of video, this is something we've talked about doing a little bit more. We are really stoked right now on like older vintage bikes, like 80s, 90s mountain bikes. Yeah. So we've been talking about doing, you know, a bunch of builds on those and either giving them away here on the channel or just having those bikes for ourselves. So if that's something you guys would like to see here on the channel, it's definitely something that we're interested in doing. So let us know down in the comments. If you've ever taken your bike apart and spray painted it before, let us know how it turned out. If you haven't before, definitely give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. It does take a little bit of work just prepping it and making sure everything is good before you throw paint down. But in the end, the result is really rad if you just take the time to do it. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this video, cruise down, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, remember to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the notification bell. You guys absolutely rule. We'll see you on the next one. Later.